Scientist Michael Swafford tells us that the Earth is literally looking down the barrel of a gun. That is, it is in serious danger, but what to do? A man revisits the camera footage of him and his family vacationing by the sea. He cries and smokes, telling his daughter through the screen how much he loves her. Meanwhile, he is being watched through a camera built into his light fixture. Who is watching him and why? The man's name is Joseph Stedman. He goes to a therapist and talks about his outbursts of aggression, his condition unstable. His daughter Zoe is 25 years old, but she can't forgive her father for her mother's death, and his other daughter is not at all well, she's been on drugs since she was 17, very lost in life and not at all as promising as her sister. Some man comes to see her and they have sex for drugs. Meanwhile, Zoe and Michael Swafford go to the library, and the man says that despite his unhappy prognosis, he is hoping for the best, thanks to the girl and her love. They are clearly happy together. All the while, a man is watching everyone through the cameras. Joe Stedman gets a badge for a year of sobriety, a great achievement for him. He tells us that when his wife died, he prayed for a long time, but no one heard him and then Joe started drinking and abandoned his children, which is why they hate him and don't communicate with him. Joe spends his days nostalgic for family life, he was happy to live with his daughters and wife, or rather he lived it. One day he waits for his daughter Zoe in the car and then comes out and gives her a gift in honor of his sobriety anniversary, but the girl does not answer anything, she does not want to see her father under any pretext. Michael tries to protect his girlfriend from an unwanted encounter, but soon becomes a victim of Joe's aggression himself. Zoe swears at her father and leaves with Michael. At home, she tries to call Rhea's sister, but she doesn't pick up the phone. Zoe quickly guesses that she has started using drugs again and goes crazy with anxiety, but Michael reassures her. Joe Stedman sits in his car in the rain and smokes, remembering how his wife was dying of cancer, how she begged him to accept it, how she asked him to be strong for the girls, but he did not believe her words, he hoped she would be alive. In the present, Joe realizes that he has ruined everything and lost everything. He snaps, pops pills and drinks alcohol right in his car, but afterwards a man puts a bag over his head and knocks him out. The observer says it's time and injects something into his eyes. The man turns on a tape of him speaking at an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. He has cameras embedded in his eyes and so they can show him whatever they want in his mind. The observer scrolls him terrible pictures of the consequences of his actions, his dead wife, and forces him to grab a gun to shoot the girl standing in front of him. He refuses, but when a picture is broadcast into his mind of his daughter about to be killed, he agrees and pulls the trigger. The girl turns out to be a fake and knocks him out with a taser. A voice tells him that he is the higher power Joe once called out to and his big plans for the man. Joseph tries to contact the emergency services, but they also say that if he reports him to the police, his daughters will be killed. What to do now? The man is sent on another crazy mission. Now he must attack the president of his company. The observer forces him to wear a mask and enter the company building. Joseph is very afraid, but goes straight to the president of the company. The voice orders him to point a gun at the man and send him to the safe. Joe does as he is told. He forces the man to pull the computer off the shelf and authorize himself. After an unsuccessful attempt to steal data from the computer, the watcher asks him to cut off the man's thumb and Joe has to do it. When he goes downstairs, the watcher asks him to put on a mask from his backpack. The watcher releases a dangerous gas and Joe has to get to the main sector in time or his daughter will die, but one of the guards doesn't pass out all the way and shoots Joe in the ear. He loses communication with the watcher, but soon recovers it and the man orders him to go to the generator because he must finish his work. The man goes to the big iron gate and goes inside, after which the strongest shocks run through his body, and the observer tells him that only after this procedure, the numbers in his DNA can converge and something unimaginable will happen. Joseph Stedman survives and goes into phase one. Everyone gets the news that the man died in the explosion. Zoe cries as she believes her father died in the explosion and she could have supported him, but never did anything about it. Joe himself wakes up at home in a tinfoil sack, he tries to ask the observer anything about his family, but the observer only angers him, and lightning comes out of the man's hands, with the walls crumbling under his blows. The observer says that the anxiety, anger, and chaos that were once his shortcomings have turned into a source of strength and endowed him with unusual abilities. The observer presses him and tries to hurt his feelings by mentioning his wife. With each outburst of aggression, Joe grows stronger. The observer sends the man to his daughter's drug dealer to deal with her. Zoe, meanwhile, pulls out her father's gift and sees in it a rock from the very shore they were sitting on in the video. Joseph himself is already scouring the dungeon with various half-dressed girls and scary-looking men. Joe finds himself captured by a gangster and tells him that the girl lives in his brothel, and afterwards includes a tape of him abusing his daughter. From Joseph's anger, a large blob of energy appears in the city, 
and the man himself turns into an angel of vengeance in real life, he is all sparkling with lightning and he doesn't care about anything, neither stabbing nor gunshots. He goes out into the street and throws everything around him. An observer tells him that Joe has done it all wrong again, and the police arrive on the scene. The cops tried to knock the man out with an electric shock, but they didn't know about his peculiarity and were unconscious themselves, but still Joseph is taken to the police station and questioned as to why he was in both places where the explosions had taken place the day before. Joe answers honestly, but no one wants to listen to him and then an observer intervenes in the conversation. He asks Joe to say that he works for a higher power and then to tell him about the bomb planet on the fourth floor. The cops start to get mad at him and he gets mad at himself, so everything in the department collapses and he finds himself at the car and jumps behind the wheel. He drives off and blasts lightning flashes at the cars that are chasing him. Zoe sees the news about her father on TV and can't believe what she sees. An observer tells him that Joe is ready to enter the final phase. Meanwhile, flashes sweep across the city, cutting through space, is he the harbinger of the end of the world? The police are looking for a bomb, but everyone scatters in fear after seeing a flying electric man. He even shoots down an airplane and it falls to the ground. He then takes a subway train, intending to do something terrible to it, but hesitating. The watcher tells him that Joe is going into the last phase, and then shows an image of his daughter, who is trapped by the watcher. Joe scatters the armed men with the wreckage of the building while the watcher himself silently watches what is going on. Joseph approaches his daughter and calms her down, taking her with him. He says that everything will be okay, he will take her sister too, and they will fly away. Soon it turns out that Michael was the one to blame, he's the one who set up this whole crazy experiment. From start to finish. And when he sees Zoe flying away from the ground with her father, Michael is ordered to shoot the girl and he obeys the command. Joe can't believe he's losing his daughter and asks her not to leave him. The watcher watches this and soon shows Joseph a video clip of his daughter being killed by men with guns. He becomes angry and finally enters the final phase, enveloping the earth stone with his energy and his body. He is so large that it is hard not to notice him when he is on another planet. The watcher says he's made a god out of him, and it's true, his power is the envy of many now. He's kind of like Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen. The watcher is asking for something atypical. He's asking to save planet earth. That is, None of this was for evil motives, but only for the good of the earth. But does Joseph Stedman need the earth if he has no one else on it? No wife, no children, who is he now? Joseph recalls the words of his late wife, she asked him to be strong, and yet he promised her he would be. He saves his daughter by pulling a bullet out of her body and placing her on that very shore, along with Rhea. The daughters embrace on the beach, just as they once embraced on that videotape, which Joseph re-watched and cried. Rocks fly up around the girls as they embrace, and everything around them is woven of Joseph's energy. So one scientist, held captive by another mad scientist, turned out to be a hero who saved the earth from imminent doom. Of course, for this he had to make sacrifices, including his own, but he had no life among humans, so maybe at least among the gods he will find peace.